I'm going to begin talking about the rise of Islam. And the beginnings of Islam cannot be seen in isolation. The story of Islam is that Islam begins in Mecca with Muhammad the prophet. Now, what is Mecca? First of all, what is Arabia? Arabia is essentially a desert. Now, in Western Arabia, there are three main centers which are fairly fertile. In the south is Yemen. And Yemen is a very fertile country. It's hill country. They get rain there. Many interesting things we know about Yemen in ancient times. And it is believed that coffee started there. Several hundred miles to the north is a place called Mecca. Mecca was an oasis, a large oasis. And there was a city there and a population. Of course, it was an Arab city prior to the rise of Islam. We can't consider it in terms of a great city, but it was a settlement of perhaps several thousand people. Now, another several hundred miles to the north, and the distance from Mecca to this city called Yathrib at the time, later called Medina, from Mecca to Medina is six days by camel caravan. So that's the distance. Now, these are the three places, Yemen in the far south, Mecca in the center, and Medina to the north. And from Medina, then they would go further north to Damascus, Jerusalem, and so on. Now, Mecca became a rather large international market. Now, why did that happen, or how? It's in the desert. You have to take a caravan to cross the desert to get there. But what did Gregory the Great discover when he went to Constantinople, before he became pope? He was sent as an ambassador to Constantinople to the emperor to ask for help for Rome in the West. And he realized that there was nothing that the emperor could do to help. Not only that, he noticed, he was aware of the fact, everyone knew it, but he saw the significance of the fact that the Roman Empire, Constantinople, of course, in the East, was carrying on a war with the Persian Empire. Now, Persia was located essentially what is now Iran, and they also controlled half of Iraq. And the Roman Empire from Constantinople controlled most of what is now Turkey, the eastern border of the Mediterranean, North Africa, that was the Roman Empire, and half of what is Iraq. So you can say this, that the rivers Tigris and Euphrates, which are the great rivers of Iraq, Babylon, they were the boundaries between the Persian Empire in the east and the Roman Empire in the west. Now, there was a war going on. You could say, what for? I mean, what was going on there? They were evidently fighting each other for control of a territory. And the area of Babylonia is a very valuable area. It's a very fertile country and for thousands of years had been the great fertile center of Western Asia. So they were fighting over that area. But the war had no conclusion. What happened is that in the spring, the Romans attack and they invade, and the Persians block them. And they conquer the city of Arbela, and then there's a stalemate. The next year, the Persians counterattack, and they conquer the city of Arbela, and the Romans stop them. This war had been going on for nearly 100 years. Well, 100 years of warfare. Both of these empires were accomplishing something, and it was not good. They were basically wasting their manpower, a lot of young men going to battle and getting killed. They were wasting their fortunes, because when you go to war, you spend a lot of money. If you don't win the war, you're in deeper financial trouble. By the time of Muhammad, the wars had been going on for 120 years. So this will explain something, the phenomenon that happened later, which was unbelievable. Around 600, the year 600, Muhammad started to have his revelations. Now, who was Muhammad, and how did this come about? And how come Mecca became this great international fair, international marketplace? Well, because the Romans and the Persians were fighting a war, commerce couldn't go on in the normal way. The trade routes couldn't operate. You know, first of all, trading with the enemy is one problem. The other is crossing the battle lines. So. 
the merchants of the Roman Empire and the merchants of the Persian Empire found a solution. They went into Arabia to Mecca, which was several hundred miles away from the battlefields, and there they could do business. So the merchants from the Roman Empire, who were predominantly Christian, the merchants of the Persian Empire, predominantly Jewish, because Babylonia was a great Jewish center, they met there in Mecca. Now, the other interesting point is you have a great center of people coming together. You have a merchant's convention or a business convention in Los Angeles or in Las Vegas or in New York or any place, and you have thousands of hotel rooms and you have a lot of things for the people to do, and they do their business and they have entertainment. We're talking about the year 600, and it's in Mecca, and Mecca was an oasis in the desert. So you have a caravan coming in with a thousand camels, with merchants and with goods. There are no hotels. They simply settle down on the ground, and they make a camp, and they are there for three or four weeks or a month or how long it takes them to do their business. Another group is coming in with a thousand camel caravan. They're converging in this whole area, and they're simply settling down around there. and living those few weeks that they have to do business. They have to picture what was going on there. The other thing is the market is going on during the day from sunrise and probably with a couple of hours of siesta during the heat of the day and then back into business until sunset. Now it's nighttime. What do you do now? Well, you sit around and you talk and you have a, you could say, a, a chief narrator or a teacher, and everyone is around him, and this is the evening's entertainment. It's uh, not just entertainment, it's enlightenment, it's education, and so on. The Jews had rabbis and their teachers, and the Christians had their priests and their preachers, and it went on for quite a number of years.